Hello, welcome to another commodity news by macro point of view. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends among social media. But also, please take a look on a quick situation on few key markets for Monday afternoon. And the first start with crude oil. The brand oil is rising and it's uh, highly because the market is expecting that OPEC plus will change their situation because when in June they said they will gonna rise the production they will allow the production to rise among their countries starting from October 2024 they said it might be stopped or even reversed if there is some market situations requiring such actions the thing is, at the moment, the market doesn't know, the people doesn't know what OPEC Plus will do because any situation is bad for them. First of all, if they will rise the production, the price will fall a bit further. There is also a situation that the demand for crude oil won't rise as fast as they were expecting earlier. And they even put some lower expectation of rising demand this year and next year in their last OPEC monthly report. And if they're cut and they if they keep this production cut it on the current levels, they also risk that any demand rising will be consumed by the United States, Brazil, Guyana, and countries like that, and also Canada. So it's a bad situation. If there will be rising production it will cut the prices and the prices now is rising because the market is reversing and probably expecting to keep the levels because the world has much more signs of a recession which will cut the oil demand and also the market is expecting that the cutting rates in the united states will affect the global oil market by allowing it to rise so we have two opposite expectations at the moment and we have to see on the data that we have here in this upcoming times and this week we're gonna see gdp and pce in the united states and the pce will be most important for federal reserve as it's crucial for their inflation expectations and inflation situation so this is one thing. Other thing is that the United States is buying another crude oil barrels for their strategic reserves uh, for SPR. And at the moment it's about two and a half million buyouts. And they're planning to buy up to six millions, which should be delivered in the first quarter of next year. The current buying was about $77 per bar and they were selling for 95 in 2022. So it's a great deal for their economy, yet it's showing that uh, there is some demand from the government and they'll still have, I think, uh, over 160 million bars less in strategic reserve that they had in 2021. So we are gonna see how this gonna end. And the current number of oil rigs in the United States remain untouched on a level of 483 active points. I think the market will be waiting at least to Friday in this white, white consolidation between 77 and 82 dollars. I don't expect this market will rise above 82 and half dollar. Why? First of all, this Fibonacci level. It stopped rising market here on 12th of August. And now it's even supported by technical line of SMA 55 on daily chart. So I think it's really, really hard to see penetrating this level on the current situation. And, uh, and with the Middle East situation, the Middle East, I mean, Israel versus Hamas war, the situation must be really stopped to make this oil prices fall. To rise, it has to be rising risks for oil market, which means Iran should be starting some 
actions against Israel, or Israel will launch a full-scale war on Lebanon. So this is uh, the ideas for the oil market, from my point of view, and its macroeconomical point of view, as our channel is named. And for the next, I will show you something different because we have here copper market, United States CME copper market. As you can see, we had this all times high here in May and we have recent lows in uh, August. And now, as it already seen on your screen, the copper market is probably in the also consolidation between nine and nine and a half thousand. So the cutting rates should fuel copper to rise a bit that's the one thing but i would also like to uh, mention that kamoa kakakula mine in uh, congo in democratic republic of congo which is ivanko mines end up the third phase and it should rise their abilities to produce bit to, to over 600 000 tons per year which is amazing and puts Kamoa Kakagula company and mine, of course, to be the third copper mine in the world. So Las Bambas lost the position. The Peru as a country lost for sure the position as the second copper support, uh, supplier. And uh, the first is, of course, uh, Chile. And the second now is Congo. The third is Peru. So this is a huge difference for this market so what i think now uh, the market will be waiting for the gdp and less and more for pc numbers and if pc will be fine supporting uh, the recent jerome powell's uh, claims that there is no risk for rising inflation in the united states so it will be supporting the cutting rates in september in the way that jp morgan and citigroup claim so it will be 0.5 percent uh, it would be great to see the copper market rising up to 10,000 because it should be slowing down the recession ideas for this market. So that's the copper market. And I think I would take a look for also a coffee market because a coffee is a thing that most of us doesn't think to live without. And the coffee is high prices recently and as you can see it's almost four euros since the last time we had this high prices and i think it will be highly unexpectable to see huge drop or huge rise of course if you take a look on the stocks in uh, ICE market uh, ICE warehouses it raised last week symbolically but uh, it is almost 64% higher than last year at the same time. But please remember, uh, last year we experienced extremely low stocks. So it's not that it's so great. So it's not a thing that should push the coffee market down. Uh, at the moment, the problem is with the Vietnam because what you see, it's coffee Arabica. It doesn't have much things to say about the Vietnam, but the Vietnam is coffee type Robusta. And there is a problem because at the moment, the Robusta coffee, take a look, reach the all times high on a Friday, crossing $5,000 per ton for the first time in a history. The thing is, at the moment, the weather there is very good for the coffee market, but according to the next month forecast and the La Nina weather condition, it should be that harvesting and drying the coffee beans will be distracted. And this coffee is also supported by the very low export from Vietnam. And because there is not enough robust in the market, the coffee makers and the, cof the coffee producers, the coffee that we know and we consume, are turning into Arabica to replace some of the missing robust deliveries. 
That's why the Arabica price is high and with the Robusta price so high it might mean we can expect some kind of uh, profit takers but as you can see it wasn't made in a huge volume right we reach all time highs with average volume which means there was probably not so much profit takers waiting here and the price will probably continue to rise uh, there will be of course something but I don't expect it to be too much so just keep in mind that this market the Robusta coffee market might keep rising maybe not this way like we experienced a cocoa market this year but I think we can add another 20% in the upcoming months if especially if the Vietnam weather will change against the crops in whatever way Thank you very much for your attention, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and see you next time.